It's time for the One Bar and Lepica Show, bringing you anything and everything Minnesota Vikings. Welcome to professional football. All right, welcome back to the One Bar and Lepica Show. In this episode, we're going to be talking about the 0-2 Vikings hosting the 2-0 Titans. It's, uh, it's scary. It's very scary. We're going to be talking about injuries. We're going to talk about how we win, how we lose, all sorts of stuff. Let's get right into it with Mr. Lupagus. Yeah, I just want to give some initial thoughts on this game. Um, you look at the teams, the way their seasons are going. The Vikings have not even been close to looking competitive the first two weeks. Then you get the Titans, who are uh, coming off an AFC championship game uh, appearance, and they're kind of just continuing where they left off. They've won two, they're 2-0. Um, they, you know, those games have been both been very close. Um, but initial thoughts – this is definitely got to be Titans are coming in as pretty heavy favorites in this one. Very, very heavy favorites. It'd be almost shocking if the Vikings pulled a win out of this. And the, uh, the Vikings, you know, they've, they're causing a lot of these to be drank lately just to numb, numb our purple emotions. I do want to say one thing, though. I, I, and this started yesterday for me. I'm kind of getting that sense that uh, – so maybe when those games where the Vikings win that you just no one sees coming, they all they hit it in all cylinders. They're up big early, and we kind of got a little vibe of that from some Titans fans too. So um, I, I'm not going to buy into it, but I'm I'm feeling it a little bit. Ooh, are you talking about a snatch trap game? I don't know what a snatch trap game is, but I think I am. I think I am. Could be a trap game. You never know. I hate I hate the thought of the Vikings being the uh, spoiler in a in a trap game, but you know what? Maybe that's where we're at. It's only two games into the season. We're not giving up yet. It's definitely where we're at. Hey, do you hear that? What's that? Beep, 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 Ooh. beep, 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 It's time for the one bar injury report. Injury report. Hmm. Dual sip. Well done. All right. All right. Let's start with the Titans. You know, the Titans got some, got some big boys uh, that are injured as well, just like the Vikings. A.J. Brown, wide receiver. Stallion last year did not practice again today. It is looking very bleak that he's going to play on Sunday, which is fantastic news for the Vikings. Cornerbacks, a couple of them, Chris Jackson, Malcolm Butler, both starters. Jackson plays in the slot limited today. We'll see what happens there. Hopefully one's out. Um, other than that, uh, their outside linebacker, Derek Robertson, uh, he didn't practice, but Jonathan Joseph, the old man corner, um, didn't practice as well with a calf. So that's really oh, it for the Titans. Uh, that's right. Yeah, it probably is arthritis. Uh, Vikings, whew, damn. All right. Uh, Cam Danzler, once again, did not practice. Very, very bleak. Uh, chances are he is not going to play on Sunday. Troy Dye, they chucked him on the IR, so he is out for at least three more games. Mike Hughes with the neck, again, did not practice. Uh, he will not be – no way he's going to be playing with that neck injury again. And uh, Chris Boyd hopped on the old injury report today. Why wouldn't he? All of our other corners are hurt. Chris Boyd, he might as well hop on too. Hamstring limited. We'll see what's there. And uh, Riley Reef also limited with an ankle, but something tells me he'll be out there. He's he's tough. He's tough. Don't worry. I sent a pair of shoulder pads to Madame Boyd, our former French teacher. She will be suiting up this weekend. Ooh, je m'appelle Bernard. Doesn't even have to change her jersey. It already says Boyd on the back. Uh, yeah, that's horrifying. Uh, the Vikings, one position they cannot take, well, two, but corner to get another guy hurt and Chris Boyd is horrifying. And then have Troy Dye go on, go on IR. Uh, I know we signed Todd Davis, but I don't think he'd be ready for Sunday. So it looks like the looks like the uh, Hardy Nickerson and Ryan Connolly show. Yeah, he and might have to be ready. We'll see. We'll see. But let's uh, let's get to know these no, bastards we'll, we'll, known as the Titans. Before we do that, do you have your boarding pass? For what? We're taking a trip around the NFC North. <laughs> you're right. You're right. Take your trip. Let's go. This is basically a quick Paul rankings. Um, I think we both agree with this. Look at the NFC North through uh, two games. Packers got to be number one. They beat the Vikings. They beat the Lions. 2-0, uh, and all, looking like a pretty solid team right now. Chicago Bears are 2-0. and all. Troubs, he hasn't had the best competition, but he is 2-0, and all, and he's, uh, he's dropping dimes right now. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, the, Bear, the Bears are 2-0. and all. Troubs is not 2-0. Oh, well, hey, he's done his part. Uh, and I don't know if you've ranked these guys. I would put the Lions ahead of the Vikings right now. The Lions at least have been competitive. Then I would put the Vikings at the bottom, and they're way at the bottom. They're naked in the cellar, way back in the corner, crying and shivering in the darkness. Uh, I don't think it's even close. It's not. And it's very depressing. We'll see. 
All right, well, let's fly our ass out of the NFC North. And let's get to know the Titans. Yeah, let's get to know these Titans. Uh, they're they're 2-0. They've beaten the Jags. They've beaten the Broncos. Um, they're they're looking pretty good. They're kind of starting off where they left off last year in that uh, deep run into the playoffs. You know, they are. And um, your friend from the Titans, you know, he made a good point that the game against the Broncos would have been much – wouldn't have been so close if Goskowski had missed like 12 field goals in that game. And, and I think the Jaguars, everybody's underestimating them. Those guys fight. It was a back-and-forth battle that came back. Um, but the Titans did what good teams do, and they find ways to win. And they're two and zero. Um, they got some new faces. They went. Out, they find well. Just a couple weeks ago, they signed defensive end Jamin Clowney. They also signed defensive end Vic Beasley, brought in offensive tackle Ty Sam Brillo, defensive end Jack Crawford. The first round pick was Isaiah Wilson, who has been nothing but a huge bust at this point. And they also got our boy, second round Christian Fulton, the cornerback. So some new faces on this Titans team. Um, Pretty damn talented squad and kind of built the same way the Vikings are. They like to run the football, play good defense. Um, just a, a pretty damn solid team from top to bottom. Yeah, it's uh, it's funny you say that because they are they're kind of the clone of the Vikings, just happen to be better because their front seven is gross when it comes they're to clones. Supplement. What? They were clones. <laughs> so, That's the job, right? You're right. You're right. Uh, they're, they're very similar to the Vikings. They're just, they're just pulling it together a lot better than the Vikings. So it, uh, it actually could be a very interesting game. The Titans, their issue is defense, their offense are middle of the road defense. I think they're ranked like 24th overall uh, offense, I think 17th, 18th overall. So it's not like they dominate at one thing. They're just kind of good at everything. Yeah. Yeah. They're not like, they're not a sexy team. I wouldn't call them sexy. I wouldn't call you sexy. No one does. No one has. No one ever will. Jeez, oh, um, now, now I feel bad. <laughs> all right, so think of the Titans. Uh, who is your favorite Titan of all time? Well, and don't say Michael Pruitt. Favorite Titan slash Oiler. We got we to gotta be real here. I mean, Indeed. Titans have been around since what? I, I don't even know. But Titan slash Oiler. Yeah. Are those, are those jogging shorts he's wearing? They're jogging shorts. That is Mr. Warren Moon. Came he's to the Vikings. Camel, had a great, great season for the Vikings. I think he was even a pro bowler. But even before he was with the Vikings, Warren Moon, that dude was just fantastic to watch. Really dating ourselves here. But Warren Moon, easy, not even close. I went with a different uh, Titans quarterback. It was Steve McNair, Air McNair. Um, I think I had him in fantasy a couple of years back in the day. Uh, he was just tough. He was tough as hell. I mean, he would run, take some big hits, just keep on going. Uh, damn good passer. He got the Titans this damn close to a Super Bowl championship. Kevin Dyson. Um, yeah, yeah. And a great tackle by a guy. What the hell was his name? Anyway, um, McNair, I mean, he was a gamer. I love watching him play. And uh, he was – he just, you know, he's just solid. He built well, strong guy. Um, just – I think he's a little underrated. People don't really give him enough credit. Steve Mc, Air McNair, what a guy. Air McNair even went to the Ravens. He was still damn good. So yes, all right, two quarterbacks. Those are both. Those are both good. All right. So if you could do a game of swap, you know, you could take one Titan, stick him on the Vikings roster, give him a purple jersey. Who would it be? Well, if it's swap, we have to give them somebody. So I'll give them Pat Elfline, okay. even with his injured finger. <laughs> It's a game of take. I'm sorry. It's a bad, bad game. You're right. You're right. Uh, this is a tough one because, like I said, you know, the Titans, they don't have just like a full-blown superstar except for one guy. And I don't give a shit if we got Dalvin Cook. I'm taking Derrick Henry. I'm double-dipping. I want those steeds back there just back and forth, uh, ripping shit up. Could you imagine those two guys uh, back back there in the in in the backfield would be crazy oh yeah so gary kubiak couldn't use either one wait you know what they would force them to use him i'm going derrick henry and they're both gonna rush for a thousand yards well here's how i struggle with this because look at the titans the positions they're strong at the vikings are also very strong at so you're like mm. so you kind of you kind of get down the line a little bit um but i tell you what if we had a guy like jeff Jeffrey Simmons on our D-line right now. I'd be feeling pretty damn good about our future at defensive tackle. This guy can stuff the run. He can get some interior pressure. He's only played 11 games in this league. He's got damn near 40 tackles, um, a handful of sacks. I, I think he's getting better and better every single game he plays. And he's the kind of guy that, like I just said, 
I wish we had this on our team right now, a young, studly defensive tackle with nothing but upside in front of him. Yeah, uh, he was definitely my number two. I just got greedy and uh, realized that Derrick Henry, if we had Derrick Henry and Dalvin Cook, we probably wouldn't win any more games. It would be damn fun to watch. Maybe our defense wouldn't be on the field for 56 minutes a game. Well, worst case is Derrick Henry, we'd just throw him at guard, and I think he'd be a hell of a guard. I almost picked our guard, Nate Davis, because of his old boobs. Taters. All right, so let's look at these Titans. What scares the living shit out of you when it comes to the, the Titans on Sunday? I'm going to go first with this one. And there's, there's three big ones here, but um, Derrick Henry. First of all, the Vikings traditionally struggle with big power backs. We couldn't stop Jonathan Taylor last – and not that that's something to laugh about. Jonathan Taylor's a talented back, speedy, fast, powerful – but Henry is the epitome of a bruiser. He is the phys- he is the physical back of the NFL. Who do you think of when you think of a pounder, a guy who wears the defense, gets better as the game goes on? It is Derrick Henry. Um, Derrick Henry versus the Vikings is a matchup. Derrick Henry will win every single time. Yeah, that uh, that is that is very very scary. That's a, that's a given. Um, we can't stop anybody, and Derrick Henry is one of the best. Uh, I'm going, uh, since you went Derrick Henry, I'm going to go John U. Smith. John U. Smith, I mean, we made Mo Ali cox look like freaking Antonio Gates last week. Can I can say that on here? Uh, yeah, we can. Uh, I can't imagine what John U. Smith is going to make us look like, especially with our linebackers just hurting for a squirting. I mean, Hardy Nickerson's going to be out there. Uh, Ryan Connolly is going to be out there. John U. Smith could absolutely light us up. Um, and that is probably going to keep me up Sunday night. Oh, and you also got back there and A.J. Brown's out. So who is Ryan Tannehill going to look to every single time? It's going to be John Smith. Adam Humphreys. I, I would, yeah, right. I would actually rather have Hardy Nickerson Sr. out there right now than Hardy Nickerson Jr. Oh, well, that's not polite. All right, what else scares you? Well, it's Ryan Tannehill's mobility in the pocket. Um we had a hard time generating any kind of pass rush against the Packers. We did a little bit better against Phillip Rivers, but Phillip Rivers doesn't move. Tannehill is a lot like Aaron Rodgers. He's a former uh, – not that Rodgers was, but he was a former uh, college wide receiver. He can move. He can run. He can escape pressure. If he can raise extra time, John Smith is going to get wide open, and he's, it's just going to be ugly. So um, that his mobility scares the shit out of me. Yeah, Ryan Tannehill. I never thought I would say this, that he scares me. But gee, this guy is just turned the page. I mean, in Miami, he didn't have any protection, didn't have any weapons, and he just kind of stepped on his dick and looked horrible, looked like a bust. Goes to Tennessee. What a story. I'm sure Disney will make a movie about Ryan Tannehill someday. He's a completely different player. Uh, he does not make mistakes. He's out there. He's poised. He's confident. He makes plays with his arms and his leg. He is, uh, it's it's going to be tough to watch Ryan Tannehill rip us a new one, but I think he's going to. He's uh he's he, he right now he's playing like one of the better quarterbacks in the league. Remembering the hill. That's what it'd be called. Really? God, that movie sounds like it's horrible. Uh and I already alluded to this one, but just the Titans offense going against our struggling uh our linebackers. I mean, even Eric Wilson's gonna be out there, but he has had a couple of real, real rough games. So you throw Eric Wilson out there who is not playing at the top of his game, along with the Hardy Nickerson, along with the Ryan Connolly. Kendricks is going to be running his ass off trying to cover for these guys. And whether they're running the ball or doing short dink and dunks, uh, our linebackers are going to scare the living shit out of me. Yeah, I mean, there's just – you could have a laundry list of things that scare me about the Titans coming here. Um, but I just kept it at those three because those are the three major ones. Uh, what doesn't scare me about the Titans? Their kicker, Steven Goskowski. If the game is on the line – and Goskowski's out there. I'm feeling very confident that he will shake that thing big time. Wow. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just happy that you think the game might be on the line with a kick. So that's, that's great news. Well, I'll get into that in a little bit why I might think that. Yeah, uh, Goskowski, you're right. He, he's had a rough, rough go at her. We'll see what happens. Um, the front seven of the Titans does not scare me. Vic Beasley coming back. He's going to be making his debut this year. Uh, he's a very good pass rusher. Throw him in there with Clowney. They got some good linebackers, but when you look at the numbers, it really doesn't show. I mean, who's the rookie for the Jaguars last week? He ran for over 100 yards. 
if if they oh, I thought I'm on my fantasy team. It's Josh, not Josh Robinson, something Robinson. James, James, if if the Vikings do not pound the living shit out of the ball to Dalvin Cook, they're nuts. I don't care if we're down by ten or fourteen early. Keep pounding the ball. You can run the ball on these guys. Um, their front seven is kind of like the Vikings. They, they got some big names. They got some good players, but they're not performing yet. So their front seven, they're giving up 5.1 yards to carry the running backs, and they have two sacks all year. But why hasn't Gary Kubiak ran the Cheryl Cook so far? I don't – I mean, look at the first series. Yeah, something tells me he's going to be on Sunday. Time. I don't get it. But, yeah, if they do, yeah, I mean – they did. You said it. I mean, Robinson got a hundred on them. Uh, I don't know what uh, Gordon and Lindsay got in the first game, but I think they're moving the ball pretty well on the ground as well. So, yeah, Gordon um, Gordon had like eighty yards. They're running the ball well. They 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 have to do it. They have to. Yeah, but I mean, our line can they push anybody back at this point? Juice Mia no. still rolling on the ground with the force Buckner did to him. I don't know. Have the Vikings said who's going to start at right guard? I'm assuming it's Samia again, but I haven't heard anything. Oh hell yeah. Um, I would, yeah, I mean, he's probably going to be in there. But, yeah, um, everything with Titans worries me about their kicker. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> well, another thing that doesn't scare me is their secondary. I mean, Gardner Minshew, it's, start, it's probably time to start giving Gardner Minshew a little bit more credit than everybody does. For sure. He lit them up. 300-some-plus yards, three touchdowns, I think two picks. But uh, they got some issues in their secondary as well when it comes to injuries. So their secondary really – Really, their whole defense doesn't scare me. Um, as long as we show up, we actually actually go on the field and look like we want to play, uh, their defense does not scare me one damn bit. Are you calling me, please, teacher? Yes. The Colts were down a couple starters. We're going against their second string, and we still couldn't throw the football. I don't think it matters who's out there in the secondary. Kirk Cousins is so messed up right now. All he sees is that I'm feeling. If I'm the Titans, I'm triple covering Adam Thielen, and I'll know that I'm fine. Um, they still got a couple of damn good safeties, so I, I don't even care who their corners are. It doesn't matter. Uh, this past game of the Vikings is such a mess right now, so no matter. Well, how do the uh, how do the Vikings sneak away this Sunday with a W? How do they win this thing? You just turn to a caveman. I think I was half burping when I said that. Uh, well, number one, and, and the Titans, you know. That dude you talked to alluded to it. I talked to Will Lomas today on Twitter a little bit. Um, I guess the Titans are a team that will uh, lose these kind of games they're supposed to win. Um, if they come into Minnesota, lay a big turd, that's how the Vikings win. Uh, and the other part of that is when the Vikings show up. They haven't showed up yet this year. Every now and then you'll see the Vikings rise to the occasion, beat a team they're not supposed to do it. Uh, and maybe this is the week they do that. I, I don't know what else has to happen to get this team motivated, but um, maybe we're catching the Titans at a good time. They're 2-0, and feeling very good about themselves, thinking this is going to be an easy win. The Vikings are a mess, and we punch them in the mouth and, and surprise them. So I'm going to say number one is the surprise factor. Yeah, I, I mean, the Vikings win this game by coming out of the locker room and pulling their hairy balls out of their ass. Because if they come on here flat-footed for the third game in a row, it's not even going to be close. They're going to blow our asses out of the water. They got to have some fire. They got to get creative on offense. Um, you know, Gary Kubiak, the traditional old man running our offense, he's got to do something. If they come out doing the same old shit, we're going to lose. We got to force some turnovers. Um, we got to get in the Titans' heads early. And uh, I'm not going to say we're going to contain – we just have to contain Derrick Henry. He's gonna. He's probably gonna have 100 yards. We can't let him go for a 160 and two touchdowns. We just gotta contain yeah. him a little bit. And if, if I'm gonna go specifically, I mean, Kubiak has to feed Delvin Cook. Give him 20 touches. I don't care if you give him the ball three straight times. You know, three straight times every single series until it starts to work. I don't care. Run that ball. Look at what what Stefanski did that first week against the um, Falcons. The run was working, so he stuck with it. Kirk Cousins threw the ball 11 times. I want to see some of that from Kubiak. Just Run the football over and over again. Let Cook get a rhythm. Let him have the chance to bust a big one. Like you said, you got to stop Derrick Henry. You don't even have to, like, shut him down completely. Keep him to around 100 yards, maybe one score. And you got to get some kind of pressure on Ryan Tannehill. I know he's mobile. 
Uh, Yannick stepped up last week. Odenbo needs to freaking find his sack and get some pressure and play like he did last year. Um, otherwise, it, it's just it's going to be ugly. It's going to be able to be quick. Is uh, my worry. I just hate the fact that we're scared of Ryan Tannehill. If you were to ask me two years ago, it would be it would be very 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 depressing. <laughs> You should be on his side. You're a ginger just like him. I know, but, geez, I, I hate being scared of Ryan Tannehill. I hate the fact that he's going to possibly carve us up. How do the Vikings lose this game? Well, they lose just by playing the way they have the last few weeks, by having no fire, n- no desire to even be on the football field, um, and just looking like they'd rather be anywhere than playing the game of football. I, th- I think that's how they lose. Yeah, it's it's pretty much if they show up like they have been the first two weeks. I mean, we're down to what our third, fourth linebacker on the depth chart. We're down to our fourth corner. I want Chris Boyd. I want Hardy Nickerson. I want one of these guys that haven't been playing much to come out there and take a shit on the fifty yard line. I want them to come out here with some fire. I want them to get a little nutty, a little crazy, but do something to lift these veterans up because our veterans right now are not fucking doing it. There's no leadership. Um, does U.S. Bank Stadium have, like, the guys who come out and scoop out the poop like they do with the parade with the horse people? Pat Elfline can do that. He's on the IR. He can grab a shovel and clean it up. Eat it. <laughs> um, all right. So, yeah, I, I think we're kind of both on the same page. Um, we're, you know, Titans come in very heavy favorites. Probably going to win, expected to win. But maybe a pube of hope that the Vikings do show up and surprise everybody. Well, hey, look, if the Vikings show up, and I mean, they're very similar to the team they were last year. Yes, we lost Stefan Diggs, whatever. If they show up and play, we know Kirk Cousins is a lot better than he's played the last the first two weeks. We know Adam Thielen's got a lot more fire than he showed the last couple of weeks. And we know Eric Wilson is better. If these guys show up and play, we can beat the Titans. I mean, the Titans aren't that, I mean, they're good, but we, they're beatable. They are beatable, especially when they're coming here. Um, and hopefully they're looking ahead a little bit, you know, thinking they can, this is an easy win for them. Um, but we'll find out. And we'll get, you know, we'll touch the actual score, how we see this thing shaking down uh, in tomorrow's video with our actual predictions. But um, until we do that, here's something you may not know. All mammals over the weight of three kilograms take approximately 21 seconds to pee, whether it is a house cat, an elephant, or a horse. 21 seconds. 